Hi guys, this is Thunder E from Board of Work and welcome to our how to set up video. This is how to set up your Intel Nook. And um, it's a very um, straightforward process, but we felt we wanted to show you guys how to set it up with the different parts you need. And also how, of course, installing Windows and just showing the whole uh, process. Now, um, these are the things you have, but before we start, I want to tell, uh, thank Intel for sending us the Nook. And we also want to thank, uh, thank uh, Kingston for sending us some of the other parts that we, we have in here. So let's go ahead and just uh, list all the different things we, we need. So uh, first and foremost, you need your Nook. So this is the Ivy Bridge Nook uh, that we unboxed. You see it has a USB 3.0 on the front and it's got uh, two 2.0s two at the back, uh, two display, one HDMI, Ethernet port there. So that's pretty much it. Of course, without this, then it really doesn't start. And next up, we have our um, Windows uh, bootable drive here. Uh, if you can check, you can check out the video in the right, top right hand corner to show you how to create a bootable drive on a USB flash drive. If you don't know how to do that, it's a very simple process. So check that out. But you do need uh, a bootable drive, either USB or, or using a portable uh, DVD player. We just want to go with bootable drive because it's just much easier for us to do that. Next up here, we have our Bluetooth module here. So we decided to go, this is, this is actually a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi model, module, and this is one of the modules listed uh, from Intel. Um, this is the 625 Centrino. This allows you to have Wi-Fi connectivity as well as Bluetooth, which uh, is very, very nice. Uh, you don't have to have this, but we decided to throw this in there. Um, we got this for about 20 bucks, uh, $20 off Newegg. 20, I think 2025, we'll have the prices for you with uh, Pit Parker. And now these are the two things we got from um, Kingston. Now, because your Intel Nook here only has a motherboard and a processor, you don't have a hard, hard drive, you don't have uh, RAM in there, um, we, you need to get two things. The two main things you need, of course, is your RAM, uh, which it was provided by Kingston, and we decided to max it out here to get 16 gigabytes for RAM DDR3. Uh, so we'll use this and basically it's just your laptop RAM. So if you have a spare set of DR3 uh, RAM from your laptop, you can actually use it on your Intel Nook, which is very important and it's pretty cool. They actually allow you to do that. And then we have a hard drive. Our hard drive here would be a 120 gigabyte MSAT uh, hard drive. We decided to go with 120 gigabytes because we wanted to just install a bunch of things. You can go with 64 or even 32 if you will, just so that to give you something to start with. Well, what's really cool about the Nook is that you can start, you can have just your base OS in there, of course, Windows and uh, just some hard drive space and of course connected with a portable hard drive for your storage and things like that. So that's nice. Now, the other things we do need, screwdriver, because we need to unscrew this. And of course, a keyboard. Now we went with the Logitech, uh, I believe this is the, um, the K400R, which I yeah, will show you the review. Um, if we haven't put it up yet, it should be up soon on the website, which we do love this keyboard because it's a nice Bluetooth keyboard, it has a Bluetooth dongle and has that keyboard and mouse pad. So that's something that we just wanted because it goes well with the Nook and we like color white. So here are the things that we need. Uh, again, you need your Intel Nook, you need a USB bootable uh, drive for Windows 8 or 8.1, depends what time you watch this video. You do have uh, your optional uh, Bluetooth Wi-Fi dong um, adapter here, um, which will be in the PCI slot. You do have your MSAT drive, 120, and we do have our Maxit RAM from Kingston, uh, 16 gigabytes screwdriver and keyboard. So let's go ahead, uh, unscrew this up and then jump in. So here's our Nook upside down. You can see there are four screws inside the legs and we've actually unscrewed them already and you can see it's opened up. So what we're going to do is just place it down. Drop that here. Uh, make sure all these screws are out completely. Got one more that's really a little hard to get. And there you have it. So this is your nook. Of course, these are the screws in uh, the, the bottom plate here. And here is our inside of our Intel nook here. So uh, you can see this is where your memory will go. Then you do have, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is your PCI here at the bottom uh, for your uh, Bluetooth dongle, and then on the top there, of course, is for your hard drive. So the first thing I'm actually going to install is the Bluetooth Wi-Fi dongle, uh, just because it's below and it's a much so easier bring process. It a little closer. Now. You can see um, 
this is the PCI slot, as I mentioned. This is where we're gonna plug this in. But the first thing we need to do is take out this screw here. The reason I mentioned that is that you're gonna to need to use this screw to screw down, oops, your, your PCI, uh, your wireless node. So I'm gonna put that in there so it's nice and safe. Slide this in. There we go. And I'm gonna take that screw back. And hopefully my giant fingers won't mess this one up. Oops. So there you have it. It's down. And then the next thing is of course to place uh, both of these nodes. All right, so we have our Bluetooth Wi-Fi module in to the PCI slot, which is below. It was a little bit of a finagling process just to put the wires in, but remember, you have these two nodes here, and the black goes into the node, which would be on my right here, and the gray goes into the node on the left, and that's just uh, pretty much it. Next up, uh, the MSAT drive, which would go on the top here, this is the 120, which we can easily slide here. And again, that is a screw point, which we need to screw. So I'm going to take that out. And we are going to unscrew this. And um, it's a very simple process overall. I, I would say that putting this in is easier than I thought, except that Bluetooth module is just a little bit on the uh, finicky side, so hopefully Intel can adjust that with the Haswell models a little bit. I mean, it's really not that hard. It's just can be a little finicky for you. Again, my large fingers. Here we go. And there we go, screw that module down. And finally, our memory goes in here. So go and take our RAM out. Our RAM's from Kingston. It's a HyperX uh, module. Um, this is the HyperX um, KH16S9. Um, so again, if you have DDR3 memory that you've used for your laptop or an older laptop, you want you can use it with the Nook. It's very simple and it's very easy. So, so of course, you know how to use laptop memory. It's a very simple process. Slide and drop. There we have. Uh, too bad I can't actually have my HyperX facing up. It's kind of bummer. But you get the general idea here. Snap fits, that's it. So that's all you need to do internally. It really isn't that hard. Um, it's a very simple process. Remember your um, Wi-Fi Bluetooth modules is centering your 6250, uh, six it's below. This is our MSAT here, 120 on top. And then we have our memory here, DDR3, 16 gigabytes of RAM here. And uh, next up, we are going to actually close our unit up. So, Sure, you have it placed right. Oops, sorry, wrong way. Remember, let's see. There we go, and screw it up, and then we can fire up our system. So, we have our Nook plugged in via HDMI at the back. That is, of course, our dongle for our keyboard. And here is our USB uh, bootable disk for Windows. It's on, you can see there's a LED on the top. You can actually just tap that to reset it and we're going to go to the visual BIOS. So we're taking a look at the Intel visual BIOS, which shows us a lot of information. It's world renowned and it's a great tool. Our keyboard and mouse are working here. So the boot orders here on the left, you can see performance. We can also switch over here and check out some manufacturer information, system information, things like that. And up the top right hand corner, advanced system settings shows us uh, it's a Core i5 uh, clocked at 2.8. We've also got 16 gigs of RAM in there. And uh, this is the system date and time. So let's go ahead and exit and set up Windows. And uh, here we 
we go. Say yes. So you can see me here. And this will lead up to the start screen. We can also change the boot order if we want to, but it should automatically uh, recognize our uh, setup uh, uh, USB flash drive and boot up Windows 4. So we'll just show you the initial setup process and then we'll jump forward uh, to it. But it's relatively easy and I like the fact that it, it's something that's really small. The footprint is so tiny. Um, if we just tilt the camera there, you can see the USB flash drive in front. You can see the footprint compared to my cable box. It's really, really small. Uh, so that's something nice uh, that this offers overall. So let's set up Windows and then we'll uh, So here's our finished product. Forward. We've dubbed it the Ivy Nook here. We had Windows start screen and see we have Windows 8 running on here. Eventually we'll update to Windows 8.1. Uh, you can see that, let's just zoom in a little bit more so you can see the specs properly. Uh, it's uh, i5 uh, clocked at 1.8, max 2.3, 16 gigabyte, 64 gigabyte version. And of course, we're also running this on our wireless network. So you can see we are connected wirelessly, uh, Wi-Fi there. Uh, oops, zoom out of that for you. So I show you, we are on our Wi-Fi network there. Apologize. So that's it. Um, we will do some more videos. We'll actually do some gaming on the Nook. So we'll try, what we'll do is gonna install Steam, um, try some games out on here and uh, we'll see how well it works. But uh, if you have any questions or any comments about setting up the Ivy Bridge Nook or the Intel Nook or any type of Nook, uh, let us know. Uh, um, this video is a little long. Uh, we just wanted to make it as detailed as possible. It really isn't a long process. Other than the, uh, you know, putting in the wireless card, the uh, MSAT, as well as your RAM, that's pretty much it. Um, and then doing the Windows setup process. But we'll do some gaming on there. Eventually when SteamOS comes out, we'll also will throw SteamOS on the Nook and we'll see how well it functions and works. Uh, so far, the system runs very cool. We'll see how that handles with gaming. But uh, we really like it. And uh, if you have any questions, again, just let us know. So till then, thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.